Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. This is Sophia Nelson, and it is Saturday, May the 20th, if you can believe it. You know, we're almost through the month of May, and summer's just 10 days away now. And uh, a couple of housekeeping things while I let people pop on this morning and uh, hop on for the message. Number one, if you're in the Northern Virginia region, please stop by my church, Community Church, uh, next weekend, uh, the 28th of May. I'll be speaking, and I, I have the platform uh, we're doing this series through her eyes, uh, which has been a great series. Donna Pisani is joining us this Sunday. If you're in the neighborhood, stop by. She's amazing. Jill Whitlow was last week. Um, I'm going to talk about the power of unity in the body of Christ and the power of unity in America when we come together. So if you're in uh, this area next week, uh, look on social media, all the details. Good morning, everybody. Please join us. So today I got a quick word for you, but one that I think is really, really important is I look at the climate that we're in politically, as I look at the climate we're in socially, as I look at the climate we're in, good morning Houston, all around this country right now, um, it is so important that we recognize that we are in a space right now, and don't miss this because I really want to focus this morning on how we respond how you respond and how I respond, not just to crises, but to the subtle, uh, overt, covert uh, workings of what I like to call the enemy through social media, through the media, not putting the media down, through um, what we're exposed to in news, what we're exposed to at work and all around us. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of vitriol. There's a lot of stuff being spewed, a lot of name calling, a lot of attacks. And it can get very easy when we are around that to become complacent with it. Um, I saw a great report today where someone was talking about, uh, you know, the goings on about our political uh, system right now. And regardless of your party, regardless if you're a Democrat amen, or a Republican, black or white, male, female, it doesn't matter. I think all of us can agree that once a scandal gets going and once everybody gets a hold of it, nothing productive gets done. And so I want to encourage all of us this morning that no matter what's going on around you, no matter who's negative, no matter who's throwing stones and hurling insults, you and I have a responsibility when they go low we got to stay high. You know, former First Lady Michelle Obama, again, doesn't matter what your politics are, doesn't matter if you like her or not, hold on to the principle because we can all learn something from somebody. You don't have to always agree with people. That's one of the problems we're having in our country right now is that everybody thinks we have to agree. Everybody thinks we all have to be on the same page, and that's just not true. The beauty of what makes us great in America is that we don't always agree, that we don't always have the same vision for how this great nation plays out. But at the end of the day, we all love our country. And what I want to encourage us to do this morning is to not engage in the negativity. You know, the herd mentality, the crowd mentality is really easy to take hold of. You know, when I see those guys throwing stones, I pick up a stone and I throw it at somebody and hit them in the head. I don't have to know them. I don't have to know anything about them, but I join in with the abuse. I join in with the name calling and that's not who you want to be. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. And, and I would also add, let's help the homeless person too. Let's not just learn from them. Good morning, but let's uh, learn from them. And so this notion of when others go low and you stay high, let's break this down a little bit. Good morning, Baltimore. Uh, let's break this down a little bit. Um, here's the thing. It, it sounds easy, right? It sounds trite, but the truth is it's not easy to go high when others are going low. You know, we're all human. We're all flesh and blood. And I can tell you for me, for you, and for most people, when someone starts name calling, when someone starts attacking, if someone starts threatening us, menacing us, um, and social media has become a really ugly place. Many of you know uh, that I've been the victim over the last few months of an extreme um, harassing campaign on YouTube, as have many others. Um, had to get federal authorities involved, state authorities and local authorities involved, as well as authorities in other jurisdictions. Um, there were a group of men, men who I don't know, who I've never met, I've never said an unkind thing about or to, uh, had created videos about me just attacking me, just vicious, 
mean, unkind, making a mockery of the fact that I'm still single, that I'm childless, just abusive, just having fun at someone else's expense. And you know, when someone does that to you, takes your pictures, uh, mocks you, laughs at you, uh, bullies you, harasses you, demeans you, you know, your first instinct is to hit back. But that's not what I did. Uh, what I did was I went to the authorities. I made sure that the people were reported. Uh, we got uh, one and a couple of others absolutely removed. Um, I'm going to work on something broader as I'm doing now to put a stop to that type of behavior. Um, this bullying thing is serious. You know, a little eight-year-old boy, um, I don't know if you read the story about this little eight-year-old boy. It was in the news this past week. He committed suicide. An eight-year-old boy, folks. Let's pause and reflect on that. An eight-year-old little boy committed suicide after he was bullied at school. And there was a video of the bullying, I guess, captured uh, on the school cameras. And uh, just, you know, a cute little guy. So cute. And the bullies were abusing him. And I don't know if he told his parents. I don't know if he told the teachers. But it made him feel really bad about himself. And he killed himself. And let me tell you something. Um, while I certainly would never allow anybody's bullying to make me want to take my own life. That's not how I'm wired. I will tell you that the bullying and the name calling and the demeaning really hurt me. It made me cry. It made me afraid. Um... It really affected me because, um, you know, life is hard enough every day, just living, just waking up every day and trying to be a good person and live a good life and treat others kind. And to find out that there are people out there and I'm a public figure and I get it and I get that, you know, I'm not um, thin skinned. I can handle it. But uh, what I do know is, is that um, I'm a human being. And so are you. And none of us, I want you to know that God did not design you or design me to, um, to be abused. God did not design um, you or me to be attacked. We're just not wired like that. And as a public figure, I know that people are going to attack me. I mean, they make jokes. They say my hair is not my hair. They say it's a wig when it's my hair. Um, they're just mean. And what I had to finally do, and, 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 and don't miss this, um, because in order to stay high and not go low and, and, and not give in to the temptation to expose the things about these individuals that I know uh, through being well-connected, through having now files on them and knowing where they live and what they do. And, and, and as I began to learn about these people that were doing this type of harassment of not just me, of many women, of many other people, what I began to learn is that this is a cottage industry of lowness, of low behavior, of low balling, of anger, of spewing, of of hate. And what I realized is these people don't feel good about themselves, folks. They have no self-esteem. Some of them are unemployed. Some of them are um, uh, disabled. Some of them haven't had a fair shake in life. And so they become bitter, right? And in their bitterness, they attack others who give off light. And this gets back to a principle that the word teaches us about us being people who give off light, about us pe being people who have a sweet uh, a smell to us, an aroma. And when you are a Christian and when you are a person of faith, People should be able to see that in you, by the way. Someone I saw earlier mention about pastors and praying something about pastors, and I'm not sure what that's about, but yes, bitter bullies. And what I'm saying to you is, is that there should be something different about you and about me when people see our walk, when they hear our speech. And what I realized was I went back and I looked at my Instagram page and one day I had posted something about be kind because you never know what people are going through. And, you know, one of my favorite things to post over and over because I think it's so important. And there was a man who logged on one of these haters and he started calling me the B word and he wants to kill me and hate me. And I really had to look at that and say, my God, what is it that's going on in this guy's life that he's this psycho? One that he would actually put himself out there and do this type of thing in public. But two, where does that type of bitterness and anger and, 
and behavior come from? And I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a hello. I'm not a, a psychiatrist. So I can't give you the answer. But here's what I do know. When you connect yourself with low ball people and gutter people and people that roll around in the mud and people that like to cuss and fight and, and call names and bully, you are going to become just like that. You're absolutely right. These people on social media, listen to me, folks. I've learned that I have to time out of social media. I have to have a beginning period and an ending period every day. There are some days when I just don't get on at all because the toxicity is extreme and you know I told people stop sending me links of people who another person said I should be shot with a shotgun and I'm like uh, the dog old yeller in the movie I mean the most vicious heinous things that somebody can say about you I'm telling you that stuff can get to you and it, and it begins to frighten you and it begins to affect your walk so my word to you today is my word to you today is when they go low you gotta stay high Folks, I'm not going to change who I am because somebody else is bitter. I'm not going to change who I am because somebody else is a bully. I'm not going to change who I am because somebody hates the light in me. I'll never forget being a very, very young woman right out of undergrad in my first job in the New Jersey State Legislature. Um, I was a committee staffer and I never forget this guy named Mike Torpy. Mike Torpy, if you're out there, I hope you're watching this video. And Mike uh, was uh, um, about maybe five or six years older than me. He was an attorney. And I knew I aspired to be an attorney, so I naturally gravitated toward Mike uh, because he was a mentor. He was a wonderful guy uh, and, you know, just a great guy. But I never forget after I had been on the staff a couple years and I was about to leave to go to law school and Mike threw me a party um, and all the staff threw me a party. And I thought it was wonderful. I was the only woman on the staff. I was the only woman of color on the staff. And it was very nice and kind. And I remember as I was leaving and Mike said to me, I don't think it's liberal or conservative. It's people. Um, and Mike said to me, Sophia, when you first came to this staff, I hated you. I didn't like you. And I was like, what? I was mortified because I looked up to this guy and he would all, he'd always been nice to me. And I was like, what in the world? And, uh, I, uh, yeah, why wouldn't it affect me? I mean, I'm a human being just like you. You like to be threatened. My mother lives in my home with me. What if they take a shot at me and miss me and get her? Uh, you know, what about how much I travel? Um, this has been egregiously affecting me and my family. I've had to have bodyguards now. I've had to get a carry and conceal permit now. Um, to carry my weapon when I'm here in Virginia. Um, it's awful. Nobody wants to live like that. Um, I I'm not tough, actually. Um, and that's, we could, we could have a talk about that on another Periscope about this notion that black women in particular, and I thought Mama Pope broke it down really good on Scandal this past week. If you watch Scandal, it was amazing what she said because it was true. Um, I'm not, I'm not any different than any other human being. Um, if you think having someone threaten your life isn't going to affect you, try it. Um, and have them say they want to rape you and they want to kill you and they want to murder you and they want to violate you. People who've never met you, people who don't know anything about you, and they just pick on you. And, and I'm sharing this because I want you to know the bullying is real and cyberbullying is real. But I want to get back to what Mike said to me because I want you to understand something about the way you show up in the world and the way I show up in the world. And as I was leaving, Mike said, I didn't like you when you first came to the committee. And I said, why? And he said, because you were too optimistic. You were sunny. You were young and you believed that everything was possible. And there was just this big light when you walked into the room and this big energy. And, and so what I'm saying to you is sometimes you showing up in the world positive, being a light, being a help, being kind, being compassionate. I want you to know there are people who are going to hate you because you show up kind, you show up good, you are positive, you are inspirational. But I want you to keep shining that light anyway. I want you to keep showing God. I want you to keep being good. I want you not to be afraid. You know, when the bullies came for me on YouTube, it affected me so deeply, I actually shut my Facebook page down for a minute. Um, and that was on the advice of the authorities. I, I started to shut down my Twitter 
And then some friends of mine came to me and said, yeah, Serena's been bullied too, all of us. And, um, you know, the attacks are just like, come on, man. Like, what gives you the right to think you can talk about me that way or talk about any human being that way and just feel entitled? And then these people who were doing it said that their First Amendment rights were being violated. Really? You have a First Amendment right to steal my copyright images? You have a First Amendment right to cuss me, to want to rape me, to want to kill me, to want to violate me? No, sir. No, no, that's not true. You don't have that right. No one has that right. But I want you to understand that I almost caved to that pressure by getting off of social media and by shutting my positivity down because I was afraid. And what I'm trying to share with you is don't do that. Don't let the bad guys win that when they go low, you let that lowness affect you. You can't. You have to stay high. You have to live higher. You have to live better. You have to love harder. You have to be a brighter light. And that's what I want you to understand. I don't know this talk about Democrats and Republicans. You know, I don't do that. And at the end of the day, that's right. You don't dim your light. You have to continue to be like, look, if I could share the stories of, of people who've been in my home and sat at my table and then backstabbed and went out and lied, people who, again, you've done nothing but kindness to, and they just turn on you. But it comes out in the wash later. And Oprah said this best. You can't be friends with people who want your life. A lot of people can't be around positivity. A lot of people can't be around people who are going up because their lives are stuck or their lives are low. Envy, what did I say? All envy starts as admiration. All envy starts as admiration. And you got to remember that because at the end of the day, your goodness, your light, and it's that great Marianne Williamson quote that's often misattributed to Nelson Mandela about, you know, um, we, we're afraid of our own light, of our own greatness, of our own ability to uh, shine. And she talks about not dimming that shine for others. And she talks about uh, the importance of knowing who you are and being able uh, to walk in it. That's right. It's unhealthy competition. It's covetousness. It's uh, jealousy, it's envy, it's anger, it's, it's not feeling good about yourself. And so I just want you to know this morning that when they go low, you got to go high. And you gotta, that doesn't mean you don't um, protect yourself. It doesn't mean that, um, yeah, I, I, law enforcement can help if you know the law. And again, these guys were dumb messing with me because they just were dumb. They picked the wrong girl. And people, um, you can get help from cyberbullying and stalking. You report it, but if Facebook or Google or Twitter or whoever doesn't respond, you screenshot it and you go to your local authorities and your local authorities can do something. Almost every city in this country has a cyberbullying unit. Now, cyber crimes, because cyber crimes are real. People have gotten murdered by crazy people stalking them on social media. I have to take these things very seriously so I no longer can say where I am. You noticed I rarely post pictures anymore until I'm already gone and back home. Unfortunately, thanks to Google Earth and things like that, people can find out where you live. They can camp out right outside your house. So like I said, Smith and Wesson live with me. So you do what you're going to do and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But I'm the wrong person to pick on. And so at the end of the day... Um, I just want you to know, though, uh, no matter what's going on in your life right now, I'm going to end with this. No matter who's doing what to you, negative talking you, gossiping against you, trying to hurt you or your family or your reputation, you just remember, one, karma's real. It's real, real. And two, when they go low, you stay high. The first lady said it perfectly. She said it perfectly. It was the perfect turn of phrase. And again, that doesn't mean you don't protect yourself. It doesn't mean you don't report inappropriate things. It doesn't mean you don't put people on notice. Hey, I'm not going to tolerate that. But you don't have to call names back. You don't have to cuss back. You don't have to roll in the dirt with them. Because if you get in the mud with the pig, the pig is always going to win. You know that, right? The pig will always win if you crawl in the mud with the pig. Because the pig is better at the mud than you. The pig likes to get dirty. The pig likes to eat mud and dirt and wallow in it and spit it and you can clean an old pig up and the pig will go right back to his mud there's a scripture the dog returns to her vomit and the pig to her mud 
And what that simply means is people usually revert back to what they know. So you stay high when they go low. And my word to you this morning is no matter what's going on politically, no matter what's going on around you, you keep being a light. You keep speaking positivity. You keep speaking well of others. And if you don't have something good to say, just don't say it. That is a really good piece of advice that we all learned when we were little kids. And I think we've forgotten it. So that's my word to you this morning. My day is uh, fine and hopefully it's going to get better. Um, And um, I'm going to go now because I have a lot I need to do. But God bless you and keep you. I hope you have an amazing day on purpose. But when they go low, you go high. You stay high. Do not crawl in the dirt with people throwing dirt at you. Okay? Because you can't ever win that fight. There's an old African proverb, when you dig a grave for me, dig two graves. Because the moment we begin to deal in retaliations and cursings and and attackings, um, no, I'm a lifelong Republican and I don't like you because you're on here talking about, uh, you know, politics. So, um, you know, that needs to stop or you're going to get blocked. We don't do that here. All right, you guys, I got to talk to you later. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.